Chag Sameach, Happy Pesach. This is Rabbi Susan Nanis with my dear friend Tom Teicholz. Happy Hi, Susan. holidays. Yes, it really face. was a happy holiday, wasn't it? How to are be you? Actually, well, you know, uh, if I had uh, two seders with uh, people who were all doubly vaccinated and to actually taking care, but still to be together was uh, really beautiful to have those conversations in a room uh, with that back and forth and people was really lovely. Yeah, our say, I went to two seders and they were both outside and the mm -hmm. weather was beautiful. Right. And there were two, you know, tables. In one, there were separate tables and one, there was one long table. Everybody was vaccinated and um, it just felt really like a taste of freedom. <laughs> yes. Yeah, no, no. It was on topic, so to speak. I also this week, for the first time in a year, um, actually went and saw two art exhibitions inside in galleries. I also had forgotten having other people watching it and watching them look at the art is part of the experience and it adds to the experience. Mm -hmm. And I'd kind of uh, forgotten that with all my online adventures, etc. cetera. Uh, one is at LA Louvre in Venice, uh, which is celebrating its 45th year as a gallery. And they have a lovely exhibit of works on paper by David Hockney that he's done during the pandemic. Hockney rented a house in Normandy in France and did these amazing inkjet and iPad drawings of the house that he was living in, of the little town, and his ability, he's now in his 80s, to, it really doesn't look like England, it doesn't look like California, he really has this amazing ability to give you a sense of the place and to play with perspective, it, it's really uplifting, uh, his work, and it reminded me a lot, sort of, of some of Matisse's uh, later in life work. The other exhibit is down at Hauser and Wirth downtown in the Arts District, and they have an exhibition of the paintings made during COVID of Amy Sherald. Amy Sherald is the young uh, painter who painted Michelle Obama's portrait for the National Gallery. And her work, I can best describe as the 21st century Alex Katz in some way. Uh, this series uh, seems to be in a sort of beach type community. And sh she is black and her the, the subjects of her portraits are black. And it really is as if she paints images of families and people that have always been there, but have not uh, really appeared in American art missing from the art that we see. Her ability to convey quiet and calm and belonging is really beautiful. Wow, that, those two, I'd love to go. I'm gonna go and see both of those. They sound wonderful. And I still haven't uh, uh, signed up for the Van Gogh in the round. It's Van Gogh, right? In the round. Yeah, 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 yeah. I haven't done it either. I gotta do well, it. Well, it's already up to next November. It's wow. Fun. So we better do it soon. So even though there are some galleries opening, some are still showing their exhibits and their exhibitions online. The Louvre in France opened their entire collection, which is over 4,000 pieces of art. Not just the Mona Lisa, but all the great art of the Louvre is now available. And our friends at the Stryker Center are having an amazing event on April 7th, which is the curator of the Pauline Museum, the Pauline, the museum in Poland, in Warsaw, of the history of the Jews, is opening up their exhibits for people to see. And it's 1,000 years of Jewish history in Poland. And apparently there are reconstructions of homes and rooms and synagogues as well. And it's supposed to be the best Jewish museum in the world. Yes, I've, he I've heard that it's a really great museum. Um, Shame uh, that it's in Warsaw. <laughs> yes. 
you you mentioned that the Louvre uh, collection is uh, four thousand pieces, but actually they have digitized four hundred and eighty thousand. Oh pieces, my God! Um, that you can access now online. So there must be some in storage and some in yeah, all. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's mind blowing. Oh, so that sounds beautiful. Well, we have we're going to be very busy. Now, now, now speaking uh, of um, Jews of Polish heritage, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's my segue. About to be published is the authorized biography of Philip Roth by Blake Bailey, who was um, Cheever's biographer, among others. And it's 800 pages long. Um, and I can tell you, because I've, I've read it, that it is incredibly thoroughly researched and documented. It reads very fluidly, and you get quite a uh, sense of uh, Roth's life and some of the inspiration and controversies surrounding his works. I will say as a criticism that um, as the authorized biography, Blake Bailey does uh, sometimes take Roth's point of view too much. All his ex-girlfriends are terrible. They were the wrong. You know what I mean? It's not like, uh, I think life is a little bit, you know, I think there's two sides and the other side doesn't always get voice in this book. And it, uh, it I mean, it's probably impossible to do. I would say this book certainly lacks a certain esprit de Roth. Oh. Of how the personality sort of came up with these books and why it is that he had this successful series of novels, unlike pretty much any writer in American right. history. So I recommend the book because it will give you a sense of Roth and his life and his importance. And he really is certainly one of the major American writers and one of the certainly the major American Jewish writers. So that's Roth. So uh, speaking of books, I just want to remind everyone, because I mentioned it two weeks ago and you might have forgotten, that on April 5th, again, at the Stryker Center, Judy Battalion, who wrote a book about the ghetto girls, the untold story of the girls in the ghettos who fought against uh, the Nazis, and they did it a lot of times through seduction. They did anything they could to fight back using a lot of times their feminine wiles. And uh, the book will be uh, coming out on April 6th. So, and if when you listen to Judy Battalion, you can order a book at the same time. And, and, and you and I discussed that we both had the uh, privilege of knowing Vladka Mead who is one of the women portrayed in the story, who was a resistance fighter in the Warsaw Ghetto. Yes. Um, in fact, in New York, there used to be an organization that I uh, attended when I was writing my play about the Warsaw Ghetto called WAGRO, the Warsaw Ghetto Resistance Organization. And it was all the people who were in the uprising who survived would come once a year to Temple Emanuel on Fifth Avenue in New York, and they would have amazing speakers. And when you saw these people, most of them, Tom, were shorter than I am. They were not big, strong Jews. They were, you know, small. They had lived in starvation. They weren't that healthy. And they were so brave and uh, true heroes, men and women alike. From yeah, them. no, they, they were, you know, Little Jews, little Jews who little Jews and and but and Blanca, and Blanca as the wife of Ben Mead, you know, very wifely and deferential, but you could tell she had a you know a, a steel core. Yes, they all mm. had, you had to yes to survive. Yes, and so um, now you're going to talk about a Broadway play that's yes. available. Yes, yes. So it's a play called. Vanya, Sonia, Masha, and Spike. It's written by Christopher Durang. And interestingly enough, this performance from 2012 was filmed in order to just have an archive of the performance. It was never intended to be shown to the public. So it doesn't have fancy camera angles. 
It's really just a film of a performance of the play. That being said, it's a play that really um, grew on me as I watched it. It's quite charming. It takes place in a country house in Connecticut. It has Sigourney Weaver and uh, David Hyde Pierce. And um, it was very enjoyable. So speaking of Christopher Durang, who wrote it, and Sigourney Weaver, I went to Yale Drama School with both of them. Christopher Durang and I were in the same playwriting class for three wow. years. We graduated together. And Sigourney was my close friend who lived next door to me in our first year in the graduate dorms. And speaking of Sigourney Weaver, uh, I just uh, watched or watched part of it. I'm going to finish a new film that she is starring in. Oh, so, wow. Uh, I want to say, first of all, that I don't love a lot of the films that are, you know, when you go to Netflix or Amazon, the big featured films, they're violent, they're depressing, they're political, they're historical about horrible events. And sometimes I, I can watch them, but sometimes I just want to escape and feel good. And there's a new film out called My Salinger Year, based on a uh, memoir by a young woman named um, Joanna Rakoff. It takes place in the 90s, and it's about a young girl, a wannabe writer, who goes to work for a literary agency in New York, and Sigourney Weaver is the agent, and she's one of these old-fashioned literary agents. I actually had one. Sterling Lord was my agent. Oh, I knew Sterling Lord, yeah. Jack Kerouac's agent. You know, it's just a place with tons of books, typewriters, long lunches, and coddling of the authors. The big client is J.D. Salinger in this movie and in the story, and it's very charming. It's a little bit like The Devil Wears Prada with, you know, the kind of monstrous boss and the young girl who's making good and it's one of those charming films about character and intelligence and good dialogue, and there's no action in it. <laughs> and I, I just want to add, since we're having a Sigourney Weaver festival uh, this week, <laughs> that she appears in the fourth season of Call My Agent, yes. the French comedy, where she is the star of one episode uh, and speaks French throughout the episode quite lovely. I and saw it. Right, so so there's a lot of Sigourney to see right now. Which is so great because she's an older woman and that's so great that she's still working. The other film I just want to mention is Audrey, which is a beautiful documentary about Audrey Hepburn, whom I loved. I loved everything she did. Such an elegant, soulful woman and uh, devoted herself to you know the United Nations and humanitarian efforts when she wasn't acting. I want to... Um, just conclude, because I didn't mention it before, uh, about our Yom HaShoah program, which is this Wednesday, April 7th. This wonderful young woman, Carolyn Siegel, who's the granddaughter of Holocaust survivors, and she came to learn the statistic that about 70% of young people do not even know what the Holocaust is, and she was horrified. And she filmed this beautiful series of interviews with what they call the three G's, the third generation Holocaust survivors, the grandchildren, all now are millennials, called If You Heard What I Heard, You Would Never Forget. And there are these beautiful, poignant stories about their grandparents, what happened, and how that story impacted and shaped their entire lives. So we'll be interviewing Carolyn at 7 p.m. on April 7th, and we'll be showing one of the interviews and perhaps having one of the interviewees join us. And plus, there'll be a beautiful memorial section by our three cantors as well, surrounding the interview, Cantor Gurney, Cantor Peacott, and Cantor Shapiro. So we hope you'll join us for that. And Sounds great. One Shabbat Shalom, Happy Pesach, and one last thing: we're having a Yisker service Sunday morning that our clergy pre-recorded in the sanctuary. It's going to be very, very beautiful. So that's at 10 a.m. on Sunday. So and now we'll say Shabbat Shalom and Chag Sameach. Bye, everyone. Chag Sameach. Bye.